But you can see this build is just crazy, man. You have all the allies just like ripping through people. What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are doing another Diablo 3 Season 28 build guide for you. We are going over a much requested LOD Wave of Light Monk from my community. It can, comes from like a lot of the comments down on the YouTube videos asking me to do this. So we are going to knock it out and go over everything you need for this build and how it works. So let's get right into it. So with LOD, a lot of it, LOD meaning Legacy of Dreams gem. Legacy of Dreams gem says that when you have no set bonuses equipped, every legendary item you have increases your damage dealt by a very large percentage and reduces your damage uh, taken by 2%. This bonus is doubled for ancient items. So we are wearing no set pieces in the entire build. Now, first thing I gotta say is right off the bat is that LOD is, these are typically very hard builds to gear and equip because you need so many pieces. You have to level this gem up. And a lot of the times it's just, they're not, they're not as good as some of the other classes, but in LOD's case, this is one of the better classes and the best class for the monk. So they're just really hard to gear and you have to level this gem up. So for me, it just takes a little bit longer to gear these, um, but you know, cause you need to make sure that every item is ancient. Okay, we don't even have all of them ancient. We have some, but you really get the benefit doubled when it's ancient items. So that makes it even harder to gear. So, but with that out of the way, guys, let's get into everything you need. So. The helmet is going to be the Tao's Crin's Gaze. Wave of Light is now cast at your enemy. Everything, all of our damage is going to be coming from Wave of Light. We have the Lefer Biv Solo Kwai. I said that wrong. Cyclone Strike reduces our damage taken by 44%. You're going to be using this every five seconds. Then we have St. Archu's Gage for a shield every time we kill an elite pack. We have Cinder Coat, which gives us uh, even more fire damage as well as reduces the cost for our fire skills, which is going to be Wave of Light. Uh, Squirt's Necklace for double damage, guys. Pinto's Pride, a key piece in the build, where Wave of Light also slows enemies 80% for three seconds and they take increased damage. We have the Witch's Hour, which is a really good belt. We have Blackthorn's uh, Jousting Mail for this is another. The reason we're going with this is because it allows us to have the elemental damage on there uh, with fire skills. Uh, we have COE for more damage as well as Unity paired up with our follower so that way we can have uh, even more damage reduction because without a lot of this stuff going on, the build is kind of squishy. So then we have uh, the Crudus Boots, which allows us to have two Mystic Allies and they deal increased damage. Our Mystic Allies are going to be Air Allies. Then we have um, Karashiro's Blade, so the increased damage of Wave of Light by 150%. And then when... The initial impact hits three or few enemies. The damage is increased even more. Very good weapon. Then we have Rabbit Strike. This is like the main weapon of the build. Spirit Senders, Spenders that teleport you while Epiphany is active are also mimicked on a nearby target for increased damage for free. So the thing is with this build is our legendary gems are going to be Legacy of Dreams. You need to get this as high as possible. This needs to be almost maxed out. I'm 10 off, but I got it super, super high for this video. Then we have Bane of the Trapped, which is really good. And then we have uh, Enforcer. Now you're asking why Enforcer? So with Rabbit Strike, part of this is because it's a pet build in a way. So the Spirit Spenders allow us to have a pet that is, you know, everything is mimicked to the pet nearby. And when we do, when we do a Wave of Light, you see all of our allies going. So it makes it to where like you get the additional damage from having pets. Okay, I know it's weird. It, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but trust me, go with it. It's really going to help you. All right, so we have that. Now let's go over to our cube and our uh, skills. We got the Incense Torch of the Grand Temple, so it reduces the spirit cost of Wave of Light by 50% and increased damage. Very crucial to have. Then we have Binding of the Lesser Gods, so enemies hit by Cyclone Strike take 200% increased damage uh, from Mystic Allies for five seconds, and then Split Fire Allies gain three times its bonus. Then we have Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac because we need our cooldown 100% on Epiphany. With that said, I cannot stress enough, guys. You are going to have to need cooldown on almost everything. You see we have it on both our rings. We don't have it on our amulet. We should. We have it on our shoulders. We have it on our gloves. Okay, you need to have cooldown virtually everywhere on both of our weapons. The reason for this is our cooldown is 63%. 
we need this because the build really operates all the way through epiphany we need this up at all times okay we need the damage uh taken and then the re the spirit regeneration but it just helps us just deal as much damage as possible with wave of light so into our skills we got cyclone strike implosion for the bigger aoe pull so it pulls more enemies in uh that way we can wave of light and then of course wave of light explode explosive light for a big burst of energy it, this is all fire based damage then we have uh, dash and strike blinding speed for to get around the map a lot faster than have a dodge chance epiphany desert shroud for damage reduction and resource regeneration and then we have serenity ascension guys for in in we basically come invincible for four seconds and then mystic ally air ally this gains us a hundred spirit and just gives us more uh, allows us to keep spamming wave of light into our passives guys we have the guardian's path we are dual wielding so we get a 35 percent dodge chance uh seize the initiative for more damage harmony for 40 percent of our single elemental resistances from items instead increase all resist this helps us stay alive because this build is squishy then we have beacon of yatar for cooldown okay so guys this is we're gonna go in we're gonna do a gr90 just to showcase okay so this is how this build works we're gonna dash around we're gonna constantly spam these three whenever they re recharge we never have to cast cyclone strike really you can though when as soon as we have epiphany up you can cyclone strike uh, from a distance onto a, um, a group of enemies and then we just wave of light spam i a lot of times do wave of light at a distance to enemies but you're gonna see how it plays out right here let's go so wave of light super strong build super strong build it is very strong sometimes i cast wave of light ahead because the damage is just so good it helps you get through faster now remember guys every five seconds cast your cyclone strike so that way you can uh, get your damage reduction to help stay alive the build at, at first was kind of um it wasn't like annoying but it was just like why is this build so flimsy and then like why is it taking so long to kill stuff but really once you get all the pieces together and, and kind of figure out how to play it the build is very 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 strong even without the uh the added power from last season the build is very very strong you just gotta it's a little bit slower because we don't have like infinite dash or anything like that this is by means not a speed build at all okay this is not a speed build this this is about as fast as you can get it when you're teleporting onto people remember when Piffney's alive you, it, you can cyclone strike ahead which makes it really great now because because wave of light is casted at enemies you don't teleport with it so the only way to teleport is with cyclone strike it's the only way to teleport and see like right now because the epiphany's not active we just it just seems like you don't do enough damage so that's why cooldown is just so important but you can see this build is just crazy man you have all the allies just like ripping through people it's so cool man so cool and then of course single target damage is just really easy let's get that extra damage on there and they're dead this build is a sub two minute build on 90s sub three minute builds on like 105s guys the only thing with this build is that i'm gonna say is that one lod is very hard to gear it's just very hard to gear you got to get all the items you got to get those stat priorities right and the biggest thing is that you have to have them ancient look at that one minute 48 so you have to have these ancient we only have one two three four five we got five out of the 13 items ancient so as you can see 345 percent increased damage each ancient is 690 percent increased damage so you want all of these to be ancient and you want the you need the legacy of dreams as max as possible get it as high as you possibly can that's the only way that this build is going to function um in the best possible way but besides that lod is a very very powerful build it's one of the strongest builds for the monk and from last season it was one of the strongest in the game so the build is still very very good i'll show you guys real quick it still does clear 150s no problem with the no piece set people are clearing in about eight minutes or so which is really good so the build is very 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 strong so 
that is the bill guys make sure to drop a like if you have enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and uh guys we literally are about an hour and a half away from the diablo 4 open beta we stream every monday wednesday friday on the channel and we're streaming this weekend for the beta so come join us here live on youtube and as always stay gaming catch you guys in the next one peace